Hello and welcome to Clojure. When I first seen these double underscores and double hyphens, I thought people were having faulty keyboards. Then I decided to do an investigation and that's how I found BEM, or BEM if you like it that way. I'm using it in every project since then and in this video I will convince you to start using BEM and you will never want to look back. If you've been to many projects, you saw a lot of different ways yes to make sir, CSS. Yes and I mean a lot. Yes BAM stands for Block Element Modifier and is designed to provide a developer-friendly convention of making CSS code. Block is a standalone entity that consists of elements, and a modifier is a flag on a block or element that are used to change appearance or behavior. And by the way, BAM is not a library or a framework, but rather a code style guide. You don't have to install anything to start using BAM. This is a simple card element that I created, and there is another one with an additional button to the right. And now let's kick off by breaking the card into block and elements. The whole card is going to be block in our case, because it's an independent UI element that is meaningful on its own, and everything inside of a block is an element. If we take a closer look, we can even spot a high level structure. This card has a header, body and a footer. Elements in BAM can have other elements nested inside of them, so these three are going to be elements as well. As you can see, it's not any different from regular CSS, you just break the HTML into smaller pieces. We decided that card is going to be our block, so we can keep the class name of this div as it is, but I prefer to have my blocks capitalized to discover them easily. Now for elements. Everything inside of this card block is going to be an element. We discussed that this one is going to be header. But before we do that, you should know that every class name in BAM should have the name of the block and the name of all parent elements. And elements are always prefixed with double underscore. I will rename the class for this div and it's going to get more clear. Here we can see the name of the block, card, and the name of the element, header. By doing this, we make sure that the styles for this class are only going to apply to this exact element. Now this image tag. It's very popular not to give them any class names because the tag is descriptive on its own. This is true, but it's also prone to errors in the future if you, for example, wanted to add another image inside of this div, like that. BAM enforces having class names for every HTML element in your code. This way we can be sure that nothing else is affected by changing the class styles. And for the image tag, the card is our block and it's nested inside of card header element. So the class name should be card double underscore header double underscore main image. And you have to use hyphens to separate words. Same applies to this span element and to this card description div. The paragraph tag, just like image tag, usually does not have a class name assigned to it. But we still have to do that, remember? And this final div. And now we can see something interesting. This button has two class names assigned to it. The first one is a generic class for a button, but the second one is a variation. If we look to the second card, it has green and red buttons. And this is where the M kicks in. It stands for modifier. This is a perfect use case for a modifier since it changes the appearance of the element. In our case, green button. And there are two things that you need to know about modifiers. First, they are prefixed with double hyphen, opposed to double underscore for elements. And second, modifiers are added to an element as an extra class and should not be used on their own. And you should only add modifiers to blocks or elements that they modify and keep the original class. This means that we can't remove this class from here. And I will now rename the classes in the CSS file and we will review what we have. And if you liked the video so far, gently tap the like button to turn it blue and subscribe to the channel. It only takes a few seconds and will help me and my channel a lot. Thanks. And I know what you're thinking right now. We've just made the class names five times longer and added a bunch of underscores and hyphens. This looks stupid and you probably have no idea why would anyone want to use it. I understand you, but give me a few more minutes to explain. First of all, the styles are not encapsulated in this particular card block. I bet you have accidentally overwritten the style for some element that you didn't even know existed. Imagine if this class was just footer. What are the odds that the app has another element with a class footer? With BAM, you will never have to worry about such things. Second of all, let's take a look at the DOM structure. If there is a bug with that button, how easy would it be to find it in the code? With BAM, you can just inspect the element 
and instantly see the name of the related block here. Then you just have to search for it in your project and you are all set. And lastly, in BAM every element should have a class assigned to it. And this means that you will no longer see these low specificity selectors that love to break your whole layout when you add a new element to the HTML. Overall, the nature of CSS was very unstable and prone to errors. As the project grows, more and more rule sets are added and the CSS slowly becomes a huge mess that nobody wants to even touch. BAM is doing a great job at keeping the CSS code structured and readable, regardless of the size of the project. But we are only halfway there, and now you are about to discover the true power of BAM. As you can see, the CSS file doesn't look pretty, the class names are way too long, and it's quite difficult to navigate there. And the solution to that is CSS preprocessors, SAS in my case. I will create a new file and explain why. What's cool about SAS is that you can nest CSS selectors inside of each other. The class names can get very long with BAM's nature of chaining elements, and SAS is going to make our CSS code much prettier. Let's start by defining our block, which is cart and copy over the styles from the original file. And now you can use the ampersand symbol to nest our elements inside of it like this. And we can also do the same thing for elements inside of our header, like main image for example. And title as well. I think you see where we are going with this. Every element and modifier is prefixed with double underscore or hyphen respectively. Such structure makes it clear what's going on and we don't need to write the full name of the class. This is the final result. Now let's take a look at what we had before. This is exactly why I love BAM. Just take a look, it's as structured and readable as a JavaScript file. No need to write complex CSS selectors, no more fear of accidentally overriding some style, and any new HTML element can easily be added without breaking anything. All we need to do now is to compile the SCSS file and import it in index.html. And to sum this up, I'm going to answer the last question that you might have. How is BAM any better than other CSS methodologies like SMAX, OOCSS? The answer is simple. BAM is self-explanatory. You don't have to explicitly state that you're using BAM. It's clear to everyone after looking at any of the class names. The block element and modifier convention speaks for itself and barely needs any explanations. And finally, anyone, regardless of their CSS experience, can learn BAM in just a matter of a few minutes. And you are living proof of that. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment if you want to see more content like that and as usual, see you in the next video.